Welcome to the Incredible Oceans Star Wars Special! I get to combine two of my all-time favourite subjects, Star Wars and Marine Biology, into one massively geeky video. I'm going to start off looking at the marine biology of the films themselves, marine creatures that have popped up across the franchise. Then I'm going to look at actual real life marine creatures that scientists have named after Star Wars characters. There are a number of different ocean planets within the Star Wars universe. There's Kamino. This was seen in Attack of the Clones and it's a giant ocean planet with storms ranging all the time. And the aliens that live here have built these cities on stilts so they live above of the ocean. Who knows how deep the ocean is? We don't ever see that in the movie. We've also got this planet in the Star Wars universe called Mon Cala, and this planet is inhabited by two different species who are both sentient. We've got the Quarren, who are also called Squid Heads. Squid Heads, seriously, the best name you could come up with for a guy with a squid for a head is Squid Head. Also, more famously, we've got this guy, Admiral It's a Trap Akbar. It's a trap! So the only time we actually see underwater in the Star Wars saga is in episode 1, The Phantom Menace, where Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn and Jar Jar Binks go underwater, they're trying to find the Gungan city, and they run straight into this, the Colo Clawfish. I'm really pleased to see that bioluminescence clearly has evolved across the galaxy, but they flee from the Colo Clawfish straight into the mouth of this thing, the OPC killer, which is kind of part anglerfish, part goldfish, part lobster, part chameleon. We think they're not going to get away from this, they're stuck in its mouth, what are they going to do? Luckily, along comes the Sando Aqua Monster, rips the OPC killer in half, and it gives us one of the best lines in the movie, which is there's always a bigger fish. So we're going to start off in the Cambrian period, which is about 500 million years ago. Life only just started and this creature evolved and it happened to be one of the apex predators of the time. When scientists discovered this fossil, they thought, you know what, this looks remarkably like the Millennium Falcon. So why don't we call it something along those lines? So this is actually called Cambrorhaster falcatus and this, or well, even though it's about a foot long, about 30 centimetres long, this was one of the apex predators of the Cambrian period because life hadn't evolved yet into these kind of much bigger animals. So moving on, we're going to look at another fossil, this one of a trilobite. Now trilobites are a group of life forms that used to live on Earth, unfortunately they went extinct at the end of the Permian mass extinction, but these things were the dominant life form on Earth for about 300 million years. To give you a comparison, humans have been on Earth for about 20,000 years. So these things completely nailed it. So this particular fossil was found in southern China and they decided to name it after the Han Chinese. It was also the only one of this genus that they found, so obviously they had to call it Solo. So this one is actually called Han Solo. Where did you dig up that old fossil? Even though trilobites went extinct millions of years ago, we still have got one of their ancestors that is alive on Earth today, and that is the horseshoe crab. Now, horseshoe crabs live along the eastern seaboard of the United States and they come ashore in mass numbers when the tide is right and they spawn. But most incredibly, these animals have got blue blood, which we're now researching because it has all kinds of amazing biomedical properties. So moving on, we have this species of armored catfish that was discovered in Brazil in 1998. Researchers didn't get around to naming it until the mid 2000s. When they were there trying to figure out a name for it, one of the guys came into their lab and went, Hey, it kind of looks like one of the guys from Star Wars. They weren't sure which one, so they went back through, they watched Star Wars again, and it turns out the guy he was talking about was Greedo. So they named this species of fish after Greedo. <coughs> so moving from rivers down into the deep ocean floor, we encounter a group of animals called the acorn worms. And these burrow into deep ocean sediments. This particular one was found in between Iceland and the Azores on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It's this bright, vivid purple colour because it's full of iodine compounds. When scientists found this species with those kind of side appendages, they went, this totally looks like Yoda. So they called this Yoda purpurata, which means purple Yoda. Now Yoda's actually got another 
marine species named after him, a type of parasitic isopod that lives inside the gills of crabs around Taiwan. Nice. Mm, parasite I am. Now, out of all of the Star Wars marine creatures that we've been talking about, this next one is my absolute favourite. It's a deep ocean worm called Osidax. Now, Osidax relies really, really heavily on something called a whale fall. Now, a whale fall kind of does what it says on the tin, and it's when a whale dies in the upper ocean, sinks down through the water column until it lands on the sea floor. In come all these scavengers and really quickly strip all the flesh and the blubber off it until just the skeleton remains. Now in 2002, scientists from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute discovered a whale fall and they found that all over the bones was this red fuzz. They took a sample of the red fuzz and it happened to be thousands and thousands of tiny worms that had burrowed into the bones themselves. So it gets even weirder because Osidax has no stomach and it has no mouth. So instead it's got a symbiotic relationship with some bacteria that help it digest and absorb the lipids and the fats and the proteins that are found inside the whale's skeleton. But how does it burrow down into the skeleton without a mouth? It secretes acid that slowly dissolves the skeleton now, there's lots of different species of Osidax worm, but one in particular has got a tail like one of the characters in Return of the Jedi, which gives this animal the name Osidax Jabba. <laughs> so when it comes to exploring our ocean, it's the largest habitat we have on Earth, and we've only explored 5% of it. This means that every time we go down in a submersible, we discover an animal that no one has ever seen before. On average, we're discovering a new animal once every two weeks. So imagine that you found a brand new creature that no one has seen before. What sci-fi film would you name it after? 